Welcome. I'm going to walk you step-by-step step through a calorimetry problem. Here's the problem we're going to look at. In order to identify an unknown liquid, a chemist has placed a 95.6 gram chunk of iron, which has been heated to 173.2 degrees Celsius, into a calorimeter filled with 135.7 grams of the liquid. The chemist will be able to identify how much heat energy is transferred and use his skills to identify the liquid in question. This experiment is being performed with a calorimeter that has a specific heat of 3.77 joules per gram degrees Celsius and a mass of 8.5 grams. This insulated container is initially at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. When the metal is dropped into the calorimeter, it causes the liquid's temperature to increase by 8.3 degrees Celsius. What is the specific heat of the unknown liquid? And then it tells us at the bottom the specific heat of iron is 0 0.452 joules per gram degrees Celsius. These story problems can be a little scary, so I'm going to walk you through how to make it a little less scary. First, you determine what equations are going to be necessary and write them down. Certainly if we're looking for the specific heat of an object we're going to need the specific heat equation Q equals MC delta T. Let's see what all these different variables mean. The Q stands for energy that has been released or absorbed. It is going to be measured in energy units of joules. M refers to the mass and will be measured in grams. C is for specific heat and will be measured in joules per gram degrees Celsius. Delta T is change in temperature measured in degrees Celsius. We'll need to be able to calculate that change in temperature, so we need this next equation, delta T equals T final, which is the final temperature, minus T initial, which is the initial temperature. And, and then to relate the heat energy released by the object and absorbed by the liquid in calorimeter, we will of course need this equation, negative Q object equals Q liquid plus Q calorimeter. Notice that the Q of object is negative because its energy gain, or loss in this case, will be opposite that of the liquid in calorimeter. Now we'll just rearrange the equation and the story problem, so we have a little workspace, and we'll move on to step two. The best way to solve a calorimetry problem is to create a table to organize all the given data to solve the problem. First, you know that we're going to need all of this information for the piece of metal. The Q, M, C, delta T, initial temperature, and final temperature. For the liquid, we will also need to know about the energy change, the Q, the mass of the liquid, the specific heat, the change in temperature, etc. And we will need all of that information about the calorimeter as well. That logically brings us to step three. Fill in all the data provided by the story problem. We're going to read through the story problem again copying all the numbers given into the table completely, including all significant figures as they are given. This prevents us from making mistakes while we do our calculations. In order to identify an unknown liquid, a chemist has placed a 95.6 gram chunk of iron, which has been heated to 173.2 degrees Celsius. That would be its initial temperature into a calorimeter filled with 135.7 grams of the liquid. The chemist will be able to identify how much heat energy is transferred and use his skills to identify the liquid in question. This experiment is being performed with a calorimeter that has a specific heat of 3.77 joules per gram degrees Celsius and a mass of 8.5 grams. This insulated container is initially at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. When the metal is dropped into the calorimeter, it causes the liquid's temperature to increase by 8.3 degrees Celsius. 
what is the specific heat of the unknown liquid? So that is our goal to find that value. And then we are told the specific heat of iron. So that is everything that we can transfer to the table from the story problem. There are a couple of numbers that we can move around. For one thing, the initial temperature of the calorimeter is the same as the initial temperature of the liquid because they are together. And they experience the same change in temperature. All of the other values need to be found. At this point, we've taken all the data from the story problem and we don't need it anymore. We are ready to move on to step four. Solve for the unknowns one at a time. The easiest thing to solve for at this point is the change in temperature. We want to find the change in temperature of the iron. So we're going to need to rearrange the equation to isolate the unknown on one side of the equal sign. Iron actually has two unknowns in this equation, so the first thing we need to do is use the temperature information from the liquid and calorimeter to find the final temperature. The final temperature, of course, will be the same for all because that is the mark of the end of a calorimetry experiment when the temperature has stopped changing. So to find the final temperature, we add the change in temperature plus the initial temperature that gives us a final of 33.3 .3 degrees Celsius. At this point we're at the end of a step and we're going to make sure that that number is correct in terms of significant figures. Both of the numbers we're dealing with are precise to the tenths place and we are adding so our final answer needs to be precise to the tenths place. Okay, so I have transferred the answer to that step up into the table, and now we can solve for the change in temperature of the iron by taking the final temperature minus the initial temperature. And again, at the end of that step, we make sure that the answer is written correctly. Notice it is a negative sign because our iron is losing heat, therefore losing temperature. And again, we need to be precise to the tenths place. So again, at the end of each step, apply the significant figure rules. You will occasionally find a professor that would prefer that you not apply the significant figure rules. At this point, you'll have to go by what you have been told. Transfer each answer to the table as you find it, and then choose another unknown to solve for. Looking at our table, we are left with only one unknown under the iron, so we can solve for the Q, or the energy exchanged by the iron. There's the formula. We plug in all the values that we have for the variables. Our calculated answer, which you'll notice is negative. And now we need to consider significant figures. The mass is significant to three digits, specific heat to three, change in temperature to 4. We're multiplying, so this time we're counting significant figures. Final answer for that step, negative 6,050 joules. We can transfer that number up into the table and then solve for our next unknown, which will be the Q of the calorimeter. Write down the formula, add the values for the known variables, do the calculation and consider significant figures. In this case, we have two numbers being multiplied that have two significant figures and one which has three. So our final answer for this step needs to have two significant figures. That gives us a value of a positive 270 joules to transfer up into our table. Just two unknowns left. We can solve for the Q of the liquid using negative Q iron equals Q liquid plus Q calorimeter. We just need to rearrange the formula to solve for Q liquid. Q of liquid will end up being equal to negative Q iron minus Q calorimeter. When you rearrange these formulas, you need to be careful to not lose negative signs. 
Notice we're subtracting a negative 6,050 joules and two negatives equal a positive. So that ends up being a positive 6,050 joules minus 270 joules. Final answer, so 5,780 joules. The numbers we are subtracting are both precise to the tens place, so that answer can also be precise to the tens, which it already is. So we have 5,780, which we can transfer into our table. That brings us to the final step of our problem, solving for that final required unknown. We'll use that standard equation, Q equals mc delta t. However, since we're solving for the variable c, we'll need to rearrange the equation to isolate that unknown on one side of the equal sign and we see that the specific heat of the liquid will be equal to the energy absorbed by it divided by its mass times change in temperature. Plugging in the values, we have 5,780 joules divided by 135.7 grams times 8.3 degrees Celsius. Remember to enter this into your calculator in one step taking advantage of the parentheses keys. It will be faster and you will make fewer mistakes that way. Our final calculated value is 5.131802, which if we look at our significant figures, we have three with the joules, four with the grams, and two with degrees Celsius, which tells us that final answer can have two significant figures. And this final answer is indeed the end. We can complete our table and we have solved that final question. I hope you found this helpful.